Back to the soldering station, I got it all put together. It has a holder on the side for your solder also. Now, this is the first time I'm turning it on, so I don't really know what temp it needs to go to. I'm gonna kinda put it right in the middle here. Say 360. Um, it's supposed to heat up pretty quick, so I'm not sure what that thing's doing there, but it's moving like crazy. I don't know what that means. Oh, maybe that's the actual temperature of the gun. I don't know. I always smell them and see if they're hot. Yeah, it's, it's getting hot. It smells. Okay, that's cool. So let's see if we can use these crazy workpiece holders here and put our crap that we're soldering in there. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see any of this, but I'm gonna try. So I think it's heated up. And this stuff is so small that it's very hard to even see what the heck you're doing here. So let's see if we can get a little bit of solder on this thing here where we're, where we're crimping it. Whoa, it shot out of the cliff. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I have no idea where it went. Here it is. Now hold on, let's try this again. That was funny. That was funny and unexpected. That's the last thing you need is it to shoot out of the clip while you're in the middle of soldering something and it's hot, let's say. Oh, it did it again. That's gonna suck if that's what it does the whole time. Huh. What the heck? You piece of junk. I put it a little deeper into the clip this time. I wish they had a light on this soldering gun or soldering iron. As you honestly, you can't really see a thing with it. Let's see. Okay. Right, I think that's good. All right, so let's take that out. And let's try the other side now. Um, I'm gonna try this ground clip here first. So what I did is I crimped it into the ground clip, but I'd like to solder that as well. I'm using the solder that they um, provided here. Let's see. Something like a clip like this is a lot, a lot more um, size to it. You got to heat it up a lot more to solder to it than you would something small like that little diode. Oh, that works great. All right. Now let's flip it around and this other side here is a lot harder to do because I got the black wire wrapped around it and I've got also the crimp area. Oh, this, this plastic on here is already melting. Chinese crap, huh? I wonder if I'm supposed to take the plastic off when I use these things and not have the plastic uh, jaws on there. Not sure. Maybe I'll put one on this side here. Put both on there. Give it a double, uh, double hanging. Take a little stress off of one of those, one of those sides maybe. All right. So I'm going to heat up where I have this wire wrapped around the diode. Let's see. Oh, the solder's flowing nicely. Let's see if we can get some in this crimp area. Man, I feel like I need some of those glasses that the dentists use when they look in your mouth to see this fine stuff. Okay. I think we're good on that. So let me push the soldering out of the way and we'll 
come back to the next step here. Cool. And we've got all our solder connections together here. And now we have some green wire, which is the wire that's actually gonna go up to our ignition module. This green wire is gonna wrap around this. We're gonna kind of put these next to each other and attach the two diodes to each other and then wrap the green wire around that. To get a better feel of what's happening here, I lightly push these um, connectors onto the pins. I don't wanna push them all the way home yet, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend each one of these 90 degrees. So this one here, I'm gonna put a 90 degree bend and go over the other one. And that one, I'm gonna make a 90 degree to bend coming towards the left. And then I'll have a straight piece through there that I can wrap the green wire around and solder that on and we're done with this. All right, so I got two 90 degree bends on there. Now I'm gonna snip off these extra pieces where they come out of the side. And then we're gonna wrap the um, green wire around there and solder it. All right, so you can see here that I got this all loose. It's not actually soldered yet, but I got the green wire attached to both those 90 degree bent pieces. And I'm gonna solder all three of them together now. All right, so I got the solder on there now. Now at this point, I can push this into the connector all the way. Um, I've seen guys say online where they filled these connectors with epoxy after they put this in here and just kind of like encapsulates the whole thing and maybe protects it from vibrations. I probably made this pigtail longer than I need it to be, but that's all right. It's got plenty to bend down and clamp onto that hole. Interestingly enough, I mentioned that there's a magnet in this sensor. This um, metal here is seems to have some magnetic charge to it also. You take something like this screwdriver, it'll stick to it. So anyways, let's push it back together. Okay, it's in there, our trigger is done. Now, we gotta talk about the connections that we have to make on the other end on the four prongs that are on the coil. Now, one of these prongs is gonna receive this green wire from the sensor itself. And one of the prongs is gonna accept a positive wire from the battery, which is gonna give our ignition its power. One of the wires is gonna be coming from the battery and it will provide power to the ignition. Another one of the prongs will get the green wire from the sensor and that will go to the you know crank trigger input pin, if you will. And the other two pins, I believe, are gonna to go to ground. Yeah, so the last two pins are gonna to connect together and they're gonna to go to ground. So I made a little jumper to basically like connect two pins together. And on one of them, I'll have two wires that go in there so it can come out and go to ground. So what we'll do is um, we'll solder these together first. Well, this, uh, this soldering iron's working pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it, actually. This 360 degrees seems to be working pretty good for what I'm doing here. And yeah, this solder is flowing nicely. So yeah, this is cool. So this, this little get up here that will go to ground, that seems to be doing good. The flaw here is that I'm not sure where I'm gonna mount all this stuff on the engine and how long these things have to be, but I basically gotta make two more wires here. Again, one will be from this trigger to that ignition, and the other will be the hot wire coming into this thing, which will be the red wire, so. We're gonna go out to an engine now and try to mock this stuff up on an engine and get a better understanding of where everything can be. All right, so I got the last piece soldered together here. And these, these plastic things on these alligator clips, they just melted together. So I just took them off, we don't need them. Um, this last wire really should be red. I bought 
this wire here from a company called All Electronics. It's 20 gauge wire, they call it hookup wire. And I bought a black and I bought a, a green. I thought I could use red that I had, but my red is too big. So we're gonna use this black as our red. We're at the point now where we can hook up all of our wires into the ignition module. So these first two pins, notice the spark plug outputs on the top. These first two that are gonna terminate the crown will be the bottom two pins. And let me hook them up and then I'll bring you back. Okay, those two are in there. The third pin is gonna be the pin that goes to the crank trigger over here. I'm actually not gonna hook those pins up yet until I'm outside and I'm at the tractor and I know that I can make this wire reach to where it needs to reach and things like the that. The fourth pin on the top, which is this pretend red wire, will hook to the um, ignition switch of the tractor and you need a battery ignition switch. This would normally hook to the I terminal for ignition and will be hot all the time. So let's see what we can figure out here.